Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Afrata Live, and it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. So last week, we had an all Lord of the Rings Against the Odds poll, and in the end, it was the Nazgul's absolutely crushing the competition. So today, we're heading to Modern to play some Nazgul's and play some more Nazgul's and be tempted by the Ring a Bunch and try to find out if playing all nine Nazgul's is a legitimate way to win at least a couple of games in one of Magic's most powerful formats. So let's talk about our Nazgul stack, jump into a modern league, and see if we can win with all nine Nazguls. So of course, we start with our key cards, the nine Nazguls. We're playing one of each art, which I think is the only way you can play these cards. There should be a rule about that, technically. So Nazguls, they don't look very strong, but they actually play a little better than they look. So they're three mana one twos. They have Death Touch, they're Wraith Knights. When they ETB, the ring tempts us, which is a little extra value. The second level of the ring in specific that lets us loot when we attack with our ring bear is pretty good. And then when the ring tempts us, we put a plus one, plus one counter on each Wraith we control, and we can play up to nine Nazgul's in our deck, and we have all nine of them. So it's base level. Nazgul's pretty bad, like a three mana one two isn't that good, but when you think about how this actually works, it's a lot better than you think. So it ETBs, the ring tempts us, and it grows itself. So at worst, a single Nazgul is a three mana two three death touch, which still isn't really that good, but where Nazgul's become powerful is if we can get two or three or maybe nine would be really sweet Nazgul's on the battlefield because they all grow each other. So they actually grow really huge if we can get multiples on the battlefield. So how do we actually try to win with Nazgul's? Well, first, we want to get Nazgul's on the battlefield as quickly as possible. So we got Birds of Paradise, Ignoble High Arc, to let us start casting our Nazgul's on turn two to start the Nazgul Snowball. Then we have Collected Company, which is probably the most powerful card in our deck. And I was honestly shocked at how good Coco is with Nazgul's. So the way this works, let's say we Collected Company, we hit two Nazgul's. They're each going to see each other and trigger each other, and we're going to be tempted by the ring twice. So the end result is those two Nazgul's are both going to be five sixes which is actually a lot of power like coco for two five six death touchers and getting the ring temp value and growing any other race that around the battlefield is actually legitimately strong even in a format like modern so that's the strongest thing our deck can do our best play coco double nazgul's make the team huge kill you we also have a bunch of other ring temps use stuff because remember nazgul's it kind of seems like it grows with the etb trigger but it actually triggers to put a counter on our race when the ring tempts us so so we can use cards like Gollum Patient Plotter, Smeagol Helpful Guide, Call of the Ring to be tempted by the ring outside of our Nazgul's but still grow all of our race. Carrion Feeder probably looks a little weird, but both Smeagol and Gollum care about our creatures dying, so it's a sack outlet to sack a Gollum to trigger our Smeagol to make sure we're being tempted as much as possible. Otherwise, we do have some more race in our deck in Mass Vandal. So Mass Vandal is a changeling as all creature types, but it's actually pretty good in modern right now because a lot of decks are playing the one ring, and Mass Vandal's ETB can just exile the one ring so it's a clean answer to the one ring more importantly it's also a wraith and uh, nazgul's it doesn't just grow their nazgul's it grows all wraith so as we are being tempted by the ring with our nazgul's we're also making our mass vandal really really big speaking of additional race we also got some muta vaults is race in our mana base otherwise our mana is pretty typical fetch lands fash lands shock lands channel lands a castle lock wayne in the sideboard we got endurance for graveyards a bunch of removal spells for creature decks force of bigger deal with artifacts and enchantments, Necromentia for combo, Chalice of the Void for rhinos, Call of the Ring for more card advantage against control, and that is Nazgul's for modern. That's our Against the Odds deck for this week, so let's jump into a modern league and see if it's possible to win with all nine Nazgul's. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back in a bit with a wrap up. Need some magic cards? Well, you can snag them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash MTG Goldfish. I mean, we're on the draw, but we do have a turn two Nazgul. Pretty busted for his far opponent and delighted halfling. Sure. We draw Coco. That's pretty good. Uh, well, Vern Catacombs, crack Vern Catacombs. Snag a ugly forest. I forgot to update the forest. Uh, let's Birds of Paradise. So next turn, we can Nazgul. And then the turn after that, hopefully Coco into more Nazgul's. Getting in for one, sure. <laughs> Delighted halfling beatdowns. We will take it. Well, Verdant Catacombs, crack Verdant Catacombs. Grab a Schwamp and Nazgul, number one. What do you do about a Nazgul opponent? What do you do? All right, resolves. 
The ring tempts us. We will make Nazgul the ring bearer. Prax Misty, steam vents. Fire ice, sure. Misty rainforest, crax it. Stomping grounds, untapped. All right, there's the one ring. So this just means we need to Coco into Masked Vandal. Or draw Masked Vandal. Well, over on two untapped. I mean, we definitely have to Coco. Collected Company. I mean, Double Nazgul is good, but I don't know if this lets us beat a one ring. One ring is kind of a pretty busted card. We make some huge Nazguls, which is sweet. That is two five sixes, but our opponent gets to draw all the cards in the world. And I don't know if... Yeah, if we can beat our opponent drawing all the cards in the world with the one ring. We really wanted that Mass Vandal. That that's our tech. Like, we're playing a full playset of main deck answers to the one ring. Unfortunately, we could not find one with that Coco. Opponent plays an island and casts a Fury, which is not really that good. Let's see. Play Ignoble Hierarch. Get in with a Nazgul. Loot. Discard a Carrion Feeder. Opponent takes the beats down to seven. Well, play Carrion Feeder. Play Carrion Feeder. Play Blooming Marsh past the Tur. The One Ring. Opponent down to five, but infinite power in their hands. Opponent draws three cards. I guess they can always just draw another One Ring in Legend Rule. Opponent takes an extra turn. Yeah, this card is kind of busted, isn't it? Draws four cards. They do have to deal with their own one ring. I mean, if they don't deal with the one ring, they lose, right? Pretty busted. Guaranteed to kill someone within a few turns. <laughs> Let's go down a carrion feeder, go down a golem, go up two fatal pushes. I mean, we already have the mass vandal in the main deck. Could bring in necromentia. That might be worth it. Bring in a necromentia. Maybe a call the ring, run it like that. I can't believe the opponent died to their own one ring. Well, okay, no Coco, but double Nazgul. Breeding pool, delighted halfling. Well, Blooming Marsh and Ignoble Hierarch go. Ren to kill our Ignoble Hierarch, that is obnoxious. And plays a land. Well, okay, let's uh, Fatal Push the halfling. Vern Catacombs go. Gonna crack the Misty Rainforest, get a Triome, and gets back the land, plays a Misty Rainforest, more delighted halflings. Well, let's crack for the Catacombs, get an Overgrown Tomb tapped. Now gonna tap down one of our lands, gets an island, taps down a land. Well, we will Fatal Push Delighted Halfling, play a Swamp past the turn. Opponent gets back the land. Misty Rainforest cracks it. Fires of Invention and Narset Parter of Veils and takes down and gets a Time Warp. Yeah, this one. This one is over. I mean, we draw a Collected Company. That's a... There's no winning from here. Okay, sure. <laughs> sure, you got us. Our hand is horrible. We will mulligan. Slightly less horrible. We will keep. Smeagol to the bottom. I mean, so we have a fatal push for the mana dork. Mass Vandal can answer the one ring. I mean, this hand's not bad. Not a bad six, we'll see. Opponent, forest, and. Very good at having the delighted halfling. Well, we uh, would prefer delighted halfling to not live. Over into untapped, and fatal push delighted halfling. Untap, Mast Vandal. Play Muta Vault, run out of Mass Vandal. We have two of them, so running out one is fine, I think. We don't have a card in the graveyard yet anyway. Opponent, breeding pool tapped. So good at drawing delighted halflings. Well, over on Tomb, untapped. Nazgul, tempted by the ring. Mass Vandal the ring bear. Opponent down to 18. A land for the Coca would be sweet. I don't know how they always have two delighted halflings. Pretty sure every game they've had two delighted halflings. Apart from just directly answering the one ring, I think the way to try to beat the one ring is by being aggro enough that the life loss actually matters. Easier said than done, considering when you play it, you get protection from a turn. Passing. Okay, we draw. Ignoble Hierarch. Well, uh, play Ignoble Hierarch. All right, takes the beats, down to 14. Why did they just pass their turn? I'm so confused. Okay, taps down a land, sure. I mean, that's not super relevant. If we Coco into two Nazgul's, we kind of just win, right? Ren and six. 
Snipes the ignoble hierarch. Okay, that's annoying. Well, now we're back to needing to draw land. Nazgul. Well, okay. Let's play a Nazgul. Get tempted. Maz Vandal is a ring bearer. Grow the dorks, grow the dorks. Go to combat. I think we just go face here. We're gonna ignore the Ren. We might regret this, but discard the Coco. This is your turn. You better go big. You better go big because the Nazguls are coming for you. Ho, ho, Nick scoops it up. The one ring. No match for the Nazguls. Four lands is kind of a lot, but four lands is kind of a lot, but we do have the ignoblest of hierarchs. To ramp us into Nazgul's, hopefully. Well, land and Ignoble higher. Go. We do need this to live. Opponent. If this dies, we're kind of doing nothing next turn. Oh boy, it's a Ren. All right, that's bad. Kills the Ignoblest of Hierarchs. And plays a Flooded Strand. Passes. Well, okay. Fatal Push Delighted Halfling. Play the Overgrown Tomb. This Ren's about to go off, though, unfortunately. Flooded Strand cracks it. It's a Triome. Even more delighted halflings. And gets back the land. Stomping grounds. Tapped. Passes. Well, alright. It's Nazgul time. Would have been a lot better if it started last turn, but play an Nazgul. Get tempted. Pass the tur. Omnath. Okay, not the one ring, but pretty bad. Omnath with a fetch land. So apparently Omnath is the best, the best deck in modern again, thanks to the One Ring, or at least on the on the short list, the most hyped current deck in modern. Gonna make a bunch of mana, four mana. What costs four mana? Prismatic Ending. Well, I guess that technically costs four mana. Opponent gets back the land to do it again next turn. Sure. A Nazgul. Well, we will play the land. Play the Nazgul and get tempted. Yeah, just playing one Nazgul a turn starting on turn three is not going to beat our opponent's deck. <laughs> Seems unlikely. Getting the Ignoble higher killed was really brutal. If we could have started a turn early with our Nazguls off the Mana Dork, but now this Omnath just, I mean, the Omnath just dominates this game, I think. Well, Omnath plus Ren, so we know our opponent has a fetch every turn, so every turn is four mana, four life. Our Nazguls just, they can't, they can't keep up. Opponent goes to combat. I mean, I think we actually have to take it here. If we have any shot of winning, it's going to be keeping Nazguls on the battlefield to grow them. Letting Omnath live is painful, but uh, I mean, we're basically hoping our opponent has a bunch of lands in hand. Elish, oh, pfft, 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 GG, GG. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Nazgul's are not ever beating an Elish Norn. No, 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 that is, that is not ever happening. Oh boy. Well, apparently money piles back. Not uh, not thrilled about that. Not thrilled at all about that. Uh, Well, we'll do some trimming. We'll bring in, we'll bring in a bit of removal and uh, we get to play first. That's good. Well, this hand is not good. We will mulligan. All right, this hand does have a Coco. We can Fatal Push the Mana Dork. That's sweet. We have no Mana dork so that's less sweet maybe smeagol goes all the way very tempted by the ring that's for sure uh we're gonna put a carrion feeder to the bottom all right deck full of the most expensive mythics in modern can you beat our nazgul's can you beat our mighty mighty nazgul sacred foundry tapped well Vern Gadigums, crack it overgrobe to tap thin the deck past the turn the classic turn two mana dork uh, well, Vern Catacombs go. Yeah, Birds is a lot worse on turn two. If they play Ren, I swear. I swears to the magic gods. If this Birds lives, we can try to Coco into Nazgul's. And hitting two Nazgul's off of Coco is actually really strong. Otherwise, I guess we're playing Smeagol and hoping for the best. Opponent, Misty Rainforest. Looks like Ren mana to me. Opponent. Ah, Delighted Halfling, not a Ren. Okay, this is good. This is actually really good. So we get to crack this, get a Swamp. Kill the Delighted Halfling. Take Numa. Well, play a forest, and we are going to main phase a Coco here. Get two Nazgul's. Put the rest to the bottom. Get a bit tempted. I mean, when you hit two Nazgul's off a of Coco, you end up with two five sixes. That's actually kind of good. Like, even in modern, that's a lot of power. Like, we just put two five sixes on the battlefield, and every future Nazgul grows them, and we're up to level two on the ring. Like, there is actual oddly weird power here. That's a good Coco. That is a good Coco. 
I don't know how the Nazgul actually got the ring, but whatever. They actually seem a little bit intimidated. It's got to feel so bad to be playing like the, the best deck with the busted cards and like have to scoop to Nazgul. So that's got to be almost embarrassing. What do we draw? Hopefully a Nazgul. Call of the Ring. Well, okay. Play, take Numa. We want to use this bird's mana before it dies. All right. Play Call of the Ring. Go to combat. Leyline Binding. Hitting a Nazgul. Well, okay, we hit you for five. And then play a Smeagol and pass the turn. Unfortunately, they didn't even kill our Nazgul. They exiled it, so we don't get a Smeagol trigger. That would have been helpful. And we didn't get to loot, which also would have been nice. Opponent, Teferi. They might have to bounce a Nazgul. Gonna bounce the Call of the Ring. Interesting. Okay. All right, well, come on, Nazgul or Coco. Either one. All right, that's a Nazgul. That's what we were looking for. All right, play the Nazguls. Get tempted. Smeagol the ring bearer. Mill you. Grow the dorks, grow the dorks. Go to combat. Kill to fairy. Loot. Discard the call of the ring. All right, pass the turn, but it goes to seven. Hold, no wraths. Passes? Okay, okay. We draw. Fatal push. Well, we'll go to combat, do some attacking, loot, discard a fatal push, solitude. Oh, we still have lethal, don't we? We do. We do. One, two, three, four, five. Oh my god, we got the win. We got the win. Put on top, put on top, doesn't actually matter. An opponent, dead, dead, dead to Nazgul's. Okay. I mean, we just beat the most hyped deck in the format with nine Nazgul's. <laughs> and some golems and some smeagles. Hmm, I kind of like the call of the ring. The mana dorks are a little sketchy against Ren. You know what? Let's let's go down two mana dorks. Go up a call of the ring. Go up a call of the ring. Let's try it like that. Can we do it again? That's a real question. This hand gets a little bit blown out by Ren, but actually kind of a lot blown out by Ren. But opponent, Misty Rainforest passes. That is the cost of playing mana dorks. Play a forest. Play a Birds of Paradise. Pass the turn. Let us ramp into our Coco opponent. The opponent cracks a Misty. Gets a Triome. And, oh god. Okay, there's the Red. Well, that is something we were concerned about. Kills our Birds of Paradise, unfortunately. We draw a Blooming Marsh. Well, play Blooming Marsh. Play Noble Hierarch. Play a Carrion Feeder. At least now we can sack the Noble Hierarch to the Carrion Feeder. <laughs> Got him. I mean, we would like it to live because Coco's like our best card. All right, so opponent is going to go after the Ignoble Hierarch, so we'll sack to Carrion Feeder. Grow the Carrion Feeder. Untap down to 15. And Nissa. While this deck is pretty strong, well, we'll play a Blooming Marsh and a Golem. We'll go to combat, attack the Ren. If they don't block, we kill the Ren. If they do block, we can sack the Golem, kill the Nissa. All right, opponent lets it go. I mean, this Nissa is not good for us by any definition. I wonder what our opponent's deck costs on Magic Online. It has got to be ridiculously expensive. So I think Nissa, I mean, I know the One Ring is currently like 100 bucks. This Nissa is like 40 something. All right, so there's the fetch land. Makes some mana and then fetches and gets an Omnath. Looks like about $1,200 to, uh, assuming our opponents, it looks like they're just playing the quote unquote tier build of money pile. So, well, I mean, we know this is getting an Omnath, which is pretty good. Uh, or a Solitude, I guess that's the other option. Oh God, it's the one ring. A one ring and our opponent's still at 14 life. So opponent has protection from everything. We play Vernt Catacombs. There's no point in attacking because of the one ring. We will pass the turn. I'm not liking our chances. So opponent draws a card, they untap, they take a single damage, then they can draw two cards. Yeah, the one ring's kinda ridiculously busted. Opponent, Misty Rainforest, makes a mana with the Nissa. Cracks the Misty Rainforest. Is there any way we can win? Hollowed Fountain, untapped. I mean, opponent is down to 10. We know they have a Solitude though. Opponent, casts a Fury. Uh, three damage, one damage. Well, okay. Uh, crack the Vern Catacombs. Swamp. Collected Company. This is all we can really do. Collected Company. Oh, hollowed. Mo All right. Yeah, we're we're dead. One ring. Pretty busted. 
Well, we'll see. This hand, it doesn't have any ramp, which is kind of awkward. We do have an Nazgul and also a Smeagol, two Smeagols. We'll see. I guess Smeagol is kind of ramp. It's just not the kind of ramp that we want to get on the battlefield quickly. Opponent Marsh Flats cracks Marsh Flats, gets a Schwamp and an Ether Vial. Mm -hmm. So some sort of taxes, I guess. You don't see too many black Ether Vial decks. I mean, the Mass Vandal could answer it at some point. Yeah, I guess we'll crack a Vernon Catacombs. Thinning the deck's a little awkward, but we do want to play something this turn, I think. Castle Luck Wayne. Vernon Catacombs. Crack Vernon Catacombs. Swamp. Call of the Ring. Well, I mean, Call of the Ring doesn't do anything yet, but eventually, eventually it can do things. Opponent's asking if I'm the real Saffron Olive. Opponent. Taking up the Vile. Silent Clearing. And Corpse Knight. Spicy. We get tempted by the ring, doesn't actually do anything. I think we just Nazgul here, most likely. So many Smeagols. All right, play the land, play Nazgul. So we get tempted by the ring. So we get to draw a card, grow the Nazgul, pass the turn. We're, we're getting there, we'll see what our opponent has. This Corpse Knight's a little scary. This might be like a zombie rally style deck. Uh, opponent, Godless Shrine, untap down to 16. Shambling Ghast, we get drained. Yeah, Triple Smeagol's kinda awkward. Just a, uh, just a little, just a little awkward. Opponent, Vials in A. Undead Augur, we get drained. Uh, if they kill our Nazgul, we're actually kind of in sketchy shape here. Uh, opponent, going to pass. All right, well, we untap. We get tempted by the ring. We grow the Nazgul. I think we still take two. It's kind of risky, but yes. All right, we draw an ignoble hierarch. We draw Sme <laughs> Smeagol number four. Okay, that's a, that is a lot of Smeagols. That is a lot of Smeagols. We'll get a forest. That's uh, way too many Smeagols, honestly. Let's play ignoble hierarch. We got to start discarding some of these Smeagols. It is very unfortunate that all four Smeagols are on the top of our deck. Get in with the Nazgul, Exalted, Loot. We are discarding Smeagol no matter what. We know what we're discarding. Pile on. Okay, so they kill the Nazgul and Surveil. That's not good for us. Well, we get to loot. We will discard a Smeagol. Exalted doesn't do anything. Well, I think we need to... All right, Fatal Push. Oh, we could Smeagol and be tempted. You know what? Let's Smeagol and be tempted. Let's play Smeagol. Milling our opponent here is probably not a good thing. End of turn. We get tempted. Smeagol our ring bearer. Do we have to stop drawing cards? We go to nine and there's a corpse knight. You know what? Let's draw one more. All right, there's a Nazgul. Steal a Marsh Flats, pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Nazgul's versus zombies. Classic, classic modern. Attacks, attacks, attacks. Block with Smeagol. Yeah, we'll just block with Smeagol and take our beats, I think. Oh, another undead auger. Oh boy. Okay, so opponent's gonna draw a ton of cards. Yeah, that's that's not good. That's not good at all. So we go to five, our opponent draws two cards. Yeah, I'm not liking where we're at now. Undead Augur is like the best, the best possible zombie in these style of decks, opponent. Grave Crawler. Yeah, there's no coming back from this now. Ignoble Hierarch becomes a ring bearer, but that's not enough. Opponent can just loop things. We only have one fatal push. Yeah, we're just dead. All right, all right. So apparently Nazgul's not as good as, not as good as zombies. Not as good as zombies. Well, fatal push in, pile on in. Probably gotta bring in endurances. We'll go down a carrion feeder. We'll go down a golem patient plotter. We'll go down a, I mean, it was also unfortunate that we drew every Smeagol in existence. We drew every Smeagol and in zero, Zero Cocos, which is pretty awkward. All right, let's try it like that. I mean, Endurance can at least deal with some of the graveyard shenanigans, maybe. It seems like our opponent's trying to uh, do zombie rally stuff. So being able to answer the graveyard in response to a rally seems kind of big. We will keep it. So we do have the Coco, we need some lands. Our one drops a Carrion Feeder, which is not as good as the Mana Dork here for sure. I think we still run it out though. The card advantage of the Undead Augur is tough to, tough to keep up with. Overgrow Tomb, untapped, and uh, Carrion Feeder. Go. We do need to draw lands, Marsh Flats for our opponent. Cracks it, Godless Shrine, and Carrion Feeder. 
Well, uh, we will, let's see, play the, play the mute of all. Run out a call of the ring. Get in with the carrion feeder. Well, we're only one land away from Coco, which is sweet. Marsh flats for our opponent. Are we gonna play a zombie? Snow cover, schwamp. Disenchants the call of the ring, sure. That's fine, like, that's annoying, but that's fine. Opponent gets in with the carrion feeder. Well, that's a Nazgul. I mean, I think we just play the Nazgul. Play the Nazgul. Get tempted. Carrion feeder ring bearer. Oh, come on. Come on, land. About it untaps. Aw, oh, now I kind of wish they call the ring stuck around. That would have actually been pretty good. Cavern of Souls for our opponent on a Jambe. Shambling Gast. Are they going to sack it to kill our carrion feeder? All right, so carrion feeder down. We're not going to sack the Nazgul's. And Wayward Servant. We definitely need a green source. Opponent passes. Nazgul's. Well, okay. We will play the Nazgul's. We will grow the Nazgul's. We will get tempted by the ring. This gets us to the loot mode, which is nice. Getting to the loot mode means we can try to loot to find a land. I mean, I guess if everything goes completely haywire, we could pitch the Coco to the Endurance to get the graveyard. We don't want to do that, but all right. Get in with the Nazgul. Loot. Discard the ignoble hierarch. Opponent takes their beats down to 10. Okay, opponent untaps. Snow covered swamp. There's the undead auger. Undead auger's pretty good. We do have the fatal push. And another carrion feeder. A grave crawler. Opponents played out their hand for now. They can't really attack very well though. All right, sacks the grave crawler to draw. Grows the carrion feeder. Sex the carrion. What are they trying to draw into? Sex the carrion feeder. I mean, we will block with this Nazgul's. Actually, do we block with the Nazgul's? Getting rid of it seems worthwhile, right? Yeah, I think we got to. We could wait and try to go for lethal, but I think getting rid of the sack outlet's worth it here. Opponent passes. There's the land. Well, play the land. Go to combat. Hit you with the Nazgul. Loot. I think we just discard the Nazgul awkwardly. Opponent. I mean, our opponent's clearly trying to set up a rally play. At least that seems pretty clear. It seems like our opponent's trying to set up rally. If they do, this endurance is going to absolutely blow them out. Marge Flats gets a swamp, plays a shambling gas. Well, we're going to fatal push the wayward servant. Maybe they're not trying to rally. Oh, they kill our Nazguls. That's awkward. All right, all right. Headless Rider passing. Well, one, two, three. We will endurance. Shuffle in our opponent's graveyard. Untap. Let's just pass. Opponent's only got one card in hand. Let's just pass. Coco at instant speed. Hopefully find some Nazgul's. Pile on our endurance, sure. Wow, this is a big, big Coco. We do have three Nazgul's in the graveyard, which is awkward. So it is possible we kind of low roll. Mills both goes to combat. Attacks. Well, I mean, we're going to do it now. One, two, three, and four. Collected company. Nazgul, birds of paradise. I mean, at least we had a Nazgul. Well, we'll make it the ring bearer. Get tempted. Down to nine. Opponent passes. Endurance. Well, endurance is good. Go to combat. Get in with the Nazgul. Loot. Discard. Blooming Marsh. Opponent's going to block. Sure. So they get a 2-2. Two -two. All right. Sure. So opponent makes a zombie. We get a birds. Opponent takes zero. Shambling Gast <laughs> would have been sacrificed, but we'll play Carrion Feeder. I guess we probably should have played Carrion Feeder pre-combat so we could sack the birds, but what do you got? Ether Vial, that's not too much of a threat. Opponent goes to combat. Attacks, attacks. Well, it is once again Endurance time. We're going to cast Endurance. This time, I think we shuffle our own graveyard in. We have a lot of net. Wow, opponent just scoops it up. Okay. <laughs> Move over zombies. Run it back, opponents on the play. You know what? Let's go up one more call the ring. Call the ring actually seems pretty good. Let's try it like that. Carrion feeder is mostly helpful with Smeagol. And if we're taking out Smeagols because we don't want to be filling our opponent's graveyard, then carrion feeder doesn't do a ton. This does put us down to 27 creatures, which is a little awkward. Yeah, whatever. We'll make it. We'll make do. We're on the draw. Nazgul's versus zombies. Sounds actually kind of good. We will keep. We have the Coco, which is big. Marsh Flats for our opponent. And we have a Fatal Push, which is nice. Snow Covered Swamp. And there goes something. Opponent takes the Endurance. Sure. 
Well, Marsh Flats, crack it. Grab a overgrown tomb and ignoble hierarch, go. Our opponent must be using their graveyard, right? They gotta be. I mean, we've seen the grave crawler shenanigans, but it's gotta be more than that. There's a carrion feeder, a shambling ghast, and sacks it to kill the hierarch, okay. I mean, this does slow us down a bit. Opponent passes. Well, now we kinda wanna draw another mana dork. Hey, Birds of Paradise, that works. All right, Birds of Paradise and a Swamp. So this gets us to something next turn. Either Coco or Nazgul plus Mutavol. Opponent, Snow Covered Swamp. Wayward Servant, sure. Opponent, gonna go to combat, going to get in. Yeah, I think we actually just killed a Carrion Feeder. I think we can survive the Wayward Servant for now. Opponent passes. Let's play Blooming Marsh and just pass. We've seen discard. The most important card for us to resolve is this collected company. Our opponent does know it's coming because of that Inquisition. Concealed courtyard for our opponent. All right, double wayward servant. Passing, all right, one, two, three, and four. See if we can spin into some Nazgul's. Well, Nazgul and it might just be Mass Vandal, isn't it? The other option is Gollum. Is that better than a Mass Vandal? Yeah, let's take Mass Vandal, I think. So Nazgul, Mass Vandal, any order. Get tempted, grow the Mass Vandal, untap. Ignoble Hierarch. Well, okay, so play Mutavault. Activate Mutavault. Play Nazgul number two. Let's switch to this Nazgul, actually, I think is better because it doesn't get fatal pushed when Mass Vandal does. Grow the dorks, go to combat. Swing, swing, loot. And yeah, discard Overgrown to him. I mean, the way we die is by some sort of rally shenanigans. That is a way we could die. Opponent only has one white source at the moment, though. Opponent takes the beats down to 12. All right, we'll play Noble Hierarch and pass the turn. All right, no rallies, no rallies, no rallies. Undead Augur, the best zombie, drain, drain. Opponent goes back up to 14. Oh, pile on the Nazgul, okay. All right, opponent's out of cards, but they kill a Nazgul. They still have a blocker back. They leave two cards on top, that's frightening. Goes attacking. Ignoble Hierarch doesn't do anything. I think if we draw a Nazgul here, we win. We need to top deck Nazgul. Nazgul for the win? Verdant Catacombs, well, okay. Mutavault, fire it up. Go to combat, hit ya. Loot. Discard the catacombs. Opponent to two for now. Play a Birds of Paradise past the turf. Oh, all right. What do you got, zombies? They put something on top, so it's got to be good, or they wouldn't put it on top. <laughs> yes, Nazgul's good enough. Okay, that was actually that was actually kind of impressive. So we're gonna draw nothing, and then we would have drawn another Nazgul off of our loot. That was not bad. That was not bad. Sweet, sweet. We're gonna try this. We got no ramp, which is kind of awkward, but we do have a couple Nazgul's and a Call of the Ring if we, and a Coco. Like if we can just play our stuff, Inspiring Vantage and Goblin Guide. All right, so opponent doing some burning by the looks. Vroom Catacombs. Well, all right, crack this. Could really use a two drop that's not Call of the Ring. Call of the Ring's not, not the two drop of our dreams here. Down to 17. I mean, if we got nothing else going on, we will play it, but. Do we play Carrion Feeder or do we just... So we get to Nazgul next turn. Gonna be hard to spend much life in this matchup. Carrion Feeder doesn't block though. I mean, I guess just being tempted by the ring is probably worth it. Let's let's call the ring, go. Getting tempted helps, like that's not bad. It does grow our Nazguls. Not feeling super confident though, just knowing the amount of lightning bolts in our opponent's deck. Opponent Bloodstained Mire, cracks Bloodstained Mire. Get some out in. Roiling Vortex. Well, we weren't gonna gain life anyway. Opponent gets in with the Goblin Guy. Top card is Birds of Paradise. Well, we get pinged. We get tempted. Definitely not spending life. I guess we can't anyway. We draw the birds. Well, Vern Catacombs. Crack Vern Catacombs down to 13. Grab a forest and run out of Nazgul's. Oh, if only we had enough life that we could start drawing cards here, but against burn, we just can't. All right, well, we have a ring bear. It's an Asgul. It can block a goblin guide. Our three drop can sort of stop a one drop, almost. There are a lot of burn spells that can kill a two, three Nazgul. Oh, that is the worst. Searing blaze, three damage and a dead Nazgul. Gets in, top card, carrion feeder. All right, we are down to seven. Opponent has four cards in hand still. Oy, oy, oy. And we're not drawing a land for Coco. Nazgul. Let's do that again. 
Let's just keep Nazgulig. All right. Call the ring. Sadly, we're against birds, so we can't draw cards, even though we want to pass the turn. About it. Lightning bolt. Yeah, we're definitely dead. I mean, I will let them show it, but there is a 0% chance we can deal 17 damage before our opponent can deal four. There's a skull crack, and now we're literally dead, so we will scoop it up. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, burn A. We don't actually have a great plan for burn, like really at all. I guess, you know what? Let's bring in the chalices. Let's try them. Let's give it a shot. Let's try it like that. I mean, chalice on one could be annoying for our opponent at least. We really need Coco into Nazgul's. Like that's when our deck actually does good things. When we Coco into Nazgul's, we can fatal push our opponent's first play, which is also good. This is an awkward fetch land that's going to make us shock ourselves, which is less good. We have the Coco Nazgul possibility at least. Marsh Flats go. Inspiring Vantage. Dragon's Rage Shunala. Opponent going to pass. Well, this hurts, but I think we got to do it. Marsh Flats, Overgrown Tomb, Untapped, Fatal Push, Dragon Rage Channeler. Come on, lands. Fatal Push. Well, play the land. Run out a Golem. Land, land into a bunch of Nazgul's. I like the borders of these cards, actually. Like the border, the border of these showcase styles. It looks pretty sweet. Mountain for our opponent, and can we draw land? No. Get in for three. All right, takes the beats. Well, we're gonna run out a Wraith. If we can get tempted a couple times, we can start looting, which would be nice. All right, Boros charms our face down to 13. Inspiring vantage for our opponent, Monastery Schwiftspia. And Lightning Bolt's our face. Well, here they come, our opponent is going for it. Skewer the critics our face. I mean, I think this means we have to chump, right? We definitely have to chump. Opponent goes to combat attacks. We will block with the mass vandal. Can we draw a land, please, magic gods? Please, 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 please. Even a mana dork would kind of be okay. Okay, that is a land. It is a unfortunately painful land, but it is a land. We can't Coco yet. Well, go to combat, get in with the golem. The problem we have at the moment is two bolts kill us. Oh, all right, down to six. That is a that is a painful one. Down to six, take a forest. Run out of mass vandal on defense. Pass the turn. So we can fatal push the swift spear. Yeah, six is a lot less than seven in this matchup. Opponent, passing. We might as well use a fatal push. We untap. We draw another golem. Well, it is Nazgul's time. Why, we're not even gonna get to this Coco. <laughs> Nazgul's triggers will make Mass Vandal our ring bearer. Go to combat, hit ya. Opponent takes it to nine, four, five, six, seven. If we untap, we're technically a Nazgul away from lethal or a land for Coco's for Nazgul's away from lethal. Boros charm down to two. Oh, they top decked it. Mm. Turn one birds, turn two Nazgul, turn three Nazgul. Hopefully we find more Nazguls. This does mostly depend on the birds living. If the birds dies, we're kind of sad. Passes, that's a Nazgul. Well, play the land. Nazgul won. <laughs> They're coming for you, tempt you. Can you guess what we're gonna do next turn opponent? Still wouldn't mind drawing a land in case the bird dies. Castle Lock Lane and Un, oh God, okay. Unmark Grave gets our kind of cruelty. That's not great. Uh, well, Castle Lock Wayne tapped, unfortunately. Nazgul's, Ring Bearer, grow it, grow it, attack you, loot. Bloomy Marsh, since it's gonna be tapped. I mean, we'll see. If our opponent can just reanimate Archon this turn, we're probably, I don't think we can beat it. Hold, no reanimation. On the other hand, if they can't reanimate Archon this turn, our Nazgul's are gonna be huge. Burn Catacombs, cracks it. Turok, no kicker. All right, no reanimation yet. Ooh, they thought sees our Nazgul's. That's awkward. We had plans for that. All right, Coco off the top. Coco off the top for the payback. Takes our Nazgul's, grows our Turok. All right, this is huge. Marsh Flats. That's gonna grow the Turok, which is awkward. Well, go to combat, do some attacking. Discard Ignoble Hierarch, which grows the Turok play Carrion Feeder, play a land, pass the turd. I think drawing with Castle Lockwain is our best bet here. Opponent, not reanimating. All right, well, crack the Marsh Flats, grab a Swamp. 
Cast a Lockwing, draw a card. Hoping for Coco or Nazgul's. Another Mass Vandal, okay. Untap, Gollum. Well, go to combat, do some attacking. Discard a Masked Vandal. Hitch it a four. Play a Gollum. Play a Mass Vandal. Pass the turn. It all comes down to this. Take Numa. Can get back the Turok, okay. Turok doesn't save our opponent here though, right? They need the Archon to really have a shot. And opponent scoops it up. Oh, okay. Turn two Nazgul, turn three Nazgul, fast enough. And now we get to bring in Endurances, which should be helpful. Is Necromentia worth it? Oh God, could you imagine if we got necromentia <laughs> all, the, all the Nazgul's gone? Uh, I think we need to go down the Smeagol's. If our opponent's playing Reanimator, we probably don't want to do their job for them by... We probably don't want to do their job for them by uh, filling their graveyard. So we'll go down the Carrion Feeders too. You know what, let's Necromentia, I think it's worth it. So we still have 28 creatures. Actually, Mass Vandal doesn't do anything either, does it? Not that we've seen at least. All right, let's, uh, 26 creatures. I mean, we got a little lucky that our opponent didn't uh, arc on. If they arc on there, we would have been really out of luck. Well, this hand has no lands. This hand is not good, but forest marsh flats to the bottom. Yeah, let's put marsh flats to the bottom. We do have an Asgul, Cascading Cataracts. That is a Coco. We do like Coco. Birds of Paradise, go. So opponent must be playing Golos. What is happening? Swamp Cycles, Troll of Corridum and reanimates it, sure. Yeah, whatever, that's kind of fine. It's not an Archon, so that's kind of fine. I'll apply the land, run out of Nazgul. I mean, it is a clock. All right, well, there's a Nazgul. Can't be blocked except by three or more creatures. That's a, that's a big number. Gets and hits us, down to 50. I mean, we can pile on it if we need to. Blast zone and expedition map. Opponent passes. We draw to Numa. Get in with a Nazgul. I think we're gonna wait on the Coco. Cause the Endurance could be relevant later. All right, opponent gets an Urborg. Opponent, do the Void Waka. Does this mean we need to Coco now? Not really, right? I guess it's fine. Sure. Gets in, hits us. We will take it down to 10. All right, let's, uh, let's hit some Nazguls. Let's hit some Nazguls. If we double Nazgul here, we might just win. Coco, that is the worst Coco. Okay, well, a bunch of lands and an Endurance. So I guess we shuffle your stuff back in. Untap, oh, that was, that was the worst Coco. Well, let's Ignoble Hierarch. Go to combat, do some attacking. These Cocos betraying us down to 13. Overgrown Tomb past the turn. We will see opponent untaps. Swings. Well, we will pile on the troll. Graveyard and top. The fatal push is nice. Drop to five, we take three. But this means, oh, we can potentially Coco fatal push. Well, let's see what our opponent has. This is a, still a scary spot. Opponent passes. All right, we untap. One, two, do we just do this now? Maybe we wait. It's probably better to wait, right? Even if we hit, we don't win. Even if we hit, we make this, what, five power? So I guess it's smarter to wait. So let's go to combat. Fatal push the Voidwalker. Pass the turn. Well, it all comes down to this. It all comes down to this. Opponent takes up the blast zone to two. That's interesting. Persists, okay. Oh, can our Coco be good for once? Can it be good for once? Can it be good? We've had some bad Cocos. One, two, three, four, Coco. Well, Nazgul Mass Vandal, that's pretty good. The rest go to the bottom. We get tempted. A Nazgul, the ring bearer. Grow the dorks, grow the dorks, untap. And a post scoops it up. Sometimes you just play a bunch of Nazguls and that's enough to actually, to actually win. <laughs> <laughs> well, opponent's got some spice. I wonder if this is worth reanimating. Troll of Cousin Dumb. So you can swamp cycle at turn one, reanimate at turn two, and you get a five four. I honestly don't know if that's worth it. <laughs> I mean, it is evasive, I guess. It's not bad, but it didn't win the game. Opponent had the turn two troll, and Nazgul's just did not actually care. Well, sweet, sweet. Nazgul power.
So what do we learn this week about Nazgul's in modern? And overall record wise, we went three and three with the deck. And I hear you wondering, wait, how do you go three and three? That's six matches, leagues are only five matches. Well, you might've noticed in the first match of our video, we were playing the 62 card special. Apparently when I imported the deck list, I somehow added two extra cards and I didn't realize it until we were sideboarding in that first match. So I finished that match and then dropped the first league, fixed the deck, jumped into the second league, and ended up going two and three in that league. So that would make us three and three overall, a 50% win rate, which honestly, for playing nine Nazgul's in a format like Modern, I am super happy with. They overperformed in my opinion. And I think that is the biggest takeaway. If you take one thing away from this video, it's that Nazgul's might actually kind of be good. I was really surprised just how powerful they are and how much they can snowball. So I think that Nazgul's, even though they look like a meme and sound like a meme, they might actually be, I don't wanna say competitive or tier or anything, but but they're probably a lot better than you think that they are. So most of our wins, actually all of our wins came from Nazgul's, which is always nice. Sometimes you do against the odds decks. One of the worries is like, sure you win some games, but it's not with the namesake card. If we won, we were winning with the Nazgul's with this deck. So they were the card that really carried us to most of our victories. On the other hand, the rest of the shells like kind of okay. The Smeagol Golem plan, which on paper seemed like a good way to support the Nazgul's, in practice, it was kind of meh, like to the point where I'm wondering, do we even need these additional ring temp shoe cards? Would we be better if we just played generically good cards in those slots and let the Nazgul's grow themselves and not worried about the Smeagol's and the Golems? I think the Mana Dorks are a necessary evil just to make the deck fast enough for modern and Collective Company, certainly an all-star, even though we had some brutal whiffs with it along the way. I think the thing I would like most in this deck would be more race. The problem is race are just not a very supported tribe in Magic, like one of the most sneaky, powerful aspects of the deck was really Mass Vandal and having this two drop that ends up growing from all of our Nazgul's as the ring's tempting us. Plus Mass Vandal really can answer to the one ring, which is all over the place right now. But that was one of the sneaky aspects of the deck. The problem is, there's really no good race in modern and uh, that leaves us with changelings and the changelings are kind of like hit or miss. I could see realm walker maybe being worth it. You could play the unblockable one drop uh, changeling that could be in the conversation as well. So maybe that's something that's worth exploring uh, over the Smeagol's and the golems, which are just kind of clunky. But overall, I got to say Nazgul's way better than I expected them to be. I was thinking this was going to be a really, really bad underpowered, super janky style like rat colony card but in practice i think nazgul's is the best of the cards that break the rule of only being able to play four in your deck i think this is the strongest version we've seen so far and if we keep getting more good rates which sooner or later we're probably going to get some more good race i can actually see nazgul's being at least semi-competitive uh, because i was just blown away at if you can keep a nazgul or two on the battlefield how quickly they snowball into a victory and even if you can't do that like they have death touch so they can take down bigger creatures i was just just honestly very surprised with how well they played. So anyway, that's Nazgul's. That's better against the odds for this week. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you soon.